everyone, what's up? This is Simon from DevDectic. This is the second part of a three-part series on rapid prototyping with Ionic 2 and Node.js. In the first part, we've created our little API or backend. And now in the second part, we will develop the Ionic 2 frontend to connect to our backend. I already started the app simply with Ionic start, the name of the app. We use the blank template and it should be an Ionic 2 project. I've already opened the code editor and we need to install now some, um, no, not install, but create um, two files, which will both be a provider. So one is the app settings provider and the second one is a to do service. If you have not followed the first tutorial, I recommend you go back um, so you have the server up and running once we develop our uh, Ionic app. We can already surf the app. Um, and also I have running my MongoDB and I start my little backend. So this is running, this is running and the Ionic app will be running very soon. So we can close or move it to the bottom to see some error logs we might encounter. All right, here's the app. Um, let's make it look like a phone screen, or at least something like that. Um, let's increase it a bit. All right, so let's go to our files. First of all, um, we need to import our two files we have created. So the first one was the to-do service and the second one was the app settings. You can see I have typed and auto-completed these and Visual Studio Code already imported our files. This is a little extension if you want to know the name. I'm not sure if it's something like auto import or so. Um, just leave a comment if you need the correct name if you can't find it. So we have imported our providers. Um, let's work on them now. First of all, the app settings um, is a very simple provider. Um, we actually don't need any of this. I wanted to have a global settings or not really global, but we can import it anywhere where we have defined the URL for our backend. So there were different ways. I'm not completely sure if this is the best way. Um, there are other ways to import global settings, but for me, this one was quite handy and working. So. Our backend is at localhost, um, I think it was 3001. Okay, um, the constructor can actually be empty because we don't need any specific stuff in here, but we want to have a function get API URL, which we can then use in the class which will make the actual backend calls. This will simply return config.api URL. Now, why do we do this? Um, in the third part, we will connect to a remote host. And in a real scenario, you will very often have a local development environment and a remote development. So by simply changing the API URL to the remote backend, we can easily switch from the real backend to our testing backend. And this is uh, the only reason to have this file. Now let's continue with our uh, to-do service. As you know, we have three routes in our backend, get to-dos, create a to-do, and um, delete a to-do. So we need the public HTTP provider, and we need also our app settings, which are the app settings. I really like this auto import, it's, it's so easy. So first of all, we start with get to do's, which will return a list of all our to do's. And therefore we make an HTTP get request to, um, okay, let's also define it up here. Oh, come on. 
um, this dot app settings um, get API URL. Okay, so now we don't have to always call the function again. We can simply say this API URL plus to do's. And we also want to map this because we know inside our response, um, first of all, transform it to a JSON and we want a result field of the call. Um, all of the following calls are more or less the same, so let me copy them in. Okay, so we have add to do, which will take a new to do, make a post request again to to do's, but inside the body we send the text of this new to do. And finally, we have delete to do, which will make a delete call to to do's slash the ID of the to do. So it's a very good idea if you have some kind of backend that you always um, put your calls in a service like this and don't have them inside the um, component for the view. But for now, we can actually go to our view. We are ready with the settings and the to-do service. And we need to define um, an observable. Um, Let's be a type any. Sometimes the auto completion sucks a bit. And we need to import the observable. Somehow this is not automatically working. Um, we need a load to do's function, which will set our to do's to um, use our to do service. And this is the to do service. Now the import works again, just like I hope it would. Um, we also need some more stuff from Ionic, like an alert controller. I'm not sure if you can import it. No, we can't. And we also want a toast controller to display little toast messages. Um, we also need to import it here because for this, the auto import is not working. I'm not sure why. But to load our to-dos, we can now simply use our to-do service and call get to-dos. It's an observable, so it will be loaded um, and displayed once it's ready. And we always want to do this on startup. Now, three functions we need. We need add to do, to add a to do. We need uh, remove to do, um, remove a to do for a given ID. And finally, can make it private to show a little toast message indicating what happened um, with a specific function. Okay, let's see if it's compiling because load to do should already work. Um, is he loading? Let's wait a second. Okay. Um, before we add the rest of our add and remove, let's see if we can actually connect to our backend. So let's give it a title, def tactic rapid to do's. And inside our content, we can first of all remove this stuff. And we want to display our uh, to do's in a little ion list. Very simple, very basic stuff. Um, I'm not using the standard item, but I'm using the ion item sliding because we want to add some um, sliding component um, to have slide to remove. And we want to have items with an ng4 using let to do of to do's, which is our observable and mark it as async. Okay, now we can actually use ion item. Oh yeah, that's a cool function. 
just found out now. <laughs> Very interesting. And we use the to do text. Additionally, we will have ion item options. And this is the sliding button I mentioned before. We also need to specify the side. So I want to slide it in from the right side. And inside we have a simple ion button. Um, because it's a delete button, we make it the color danger. And the click event will call remove to do with the ID of the to do. Now we know this from the response we saw inside Postman in the first video. Um, yeah, well, it's just the ID which is auto generated by MongoDB. We can also give it a name. Okay, it's already completed. And below we want to have the text delete. Ion item options close, sliding closed, um, the list closed. Now we need another option to add stuff. And for this, we will use the Ion Fab, which is new in Ionic 2, a very cool button, which is um, floating above the content at the right bottom side in this case. So you can give it a button, which is Ion Fab, the click event again, and this will be add to do, to add a new to do, um, and also the Ion icon, Let's say it's a plus sign, so add. Okay, let's save, wait, and okay, we don't have any to do's. I'm not sure if this is correct, but let's see. Mm, actually, it's not really correct. So, let to do of to do's, this to do's, get to do's, and our to do's, uh, get to do's. Um, uh, is my config correct? I'm not completely sure. Um, nope. Now it is correct. Let's wait and hopefully our to-dos appear up here. Yes. My second to-do and my third to-do, which you can also see in the response. We can create another one my just created to do it's created let's refresh the view and we see the third so grabbing the data from the backend is already working now let's go back and implement our three functions so first of all the show toast is very simple um, we use our toast controller to create a new toast we show the message we gave to it and present it Nothing really fancy here. Um, to add a to do, we use a little prompt because it's the easiest way. I'm using an alert controller. Okay, and this will be the title of add to do. The message says um, enter the text for your new to do. And the inputs is now the interesting part of this. So let's start with a um, name. It's the text field. We need this name later to grab a reference to this field. And the placeholder says, mm, I don't know, buy milk or stuff like this. Okay, so this is our text field. Now we need the buttons of the prompt and the first button should be a simple cancel button. So we only make the text cancel, no, cancel and Ionic handles the rest for us. The second button is the save button. So it has the text save and now we create a handler for this button. So we get the data once we press this button and inside this data we have access to the text field. So now we can use our to do service and call nope add to do with data.text. We 
you can subscribe to this event. Hmm. Okay, yeah, we can use data again because inside this block it's the new variable. And finally, use our show toast. We know from the back end uh, we get a message back. Let's say when we create a to do, we get the success true and the message successful create a new to do. So we can show a toast with this message and we want to update our list. So we call load to do's again. Uh, we're not using success here. Um, it's a very simple example. Obviously you should, or you can always check for errors. Um, but in this case, I want to make it as simple as possible. That's everything for add. Now let's continue with remove. Um, it's even more simple. We use the to do service again. We use delete to do. We got the ID from the view. So there's nothing really special we have to do here. Just again, um, show the message from the backend and call our load to do's again. Mm, no, this would be the correct indentation. Okay, let's update and let's see. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, so we have three to do's currently. We have the swipe event and we delete the second one and it's deleted. Uh, I can tell you a lot, but you can see it's not appearing here anymore. And you can also use Robomango again. Uh, to do's, you see, we only got two elements. I remove the first, remove the first one, and we only have one more object in the database. Now let's use our Fab button, um, which is not yet working because. Um, because, why is it not working? Mm. Click add to do. Um, I'm not completely sure why it's not working. Um, click add to do. Um, well, there's everything right. Do you have to mark it as public? Or is the alert? Ah, I know, I know. I'm not. Cr uh, I've created the prompt, but I actually need to present it. Okay. Save it again, run it again, and let's wait for it. The update process is already a lot faster than it was in the beginning. So yes, now it works at to do um, generate the live backend is the next task. We save it. We have successfully created new to do and it appears right here. We can delete our to do's. We can add yes, uh, create new video and there it is. So now we've connected um, a very simple Ionic app to our real backend. Now we can use this, play around, develop the app and do stuff, which is pretty awesome already. But what if we want to show this to other persons? Obviously they don't have access to our local host backend. So we need to find a way to get the Ionic app out and host the backend somewhere where people can access it. And this will be part of the third video of this series. But for now, play around with your little working front end and back end. You are now officially a full stack developer. Uh, and I hope you subscribe to my channel and I will see you back here for the third part of the video series very soon. Goodbye.